Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with my good friend, Frank. That's a gladiator name, right? And what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be doing some level of detail on him. Level of detail, also known as LOD. I'm going to be covering the benefits of using an LOD system in your game, and I'm also going to show you how this can be done automatically. That's going to save you a lot of time. So there's not much more of an intro I can do than that. But just before we start, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what he's doing. Really great guy. And I also want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. That's Brandon Zill, Steve UK. You guys, you're fantastic. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a brief overview as to what level of detail actually is. So as we can see here, I've got Frank over here, and he's got quite a high poly count. I think it was, oh, I can't remember if I actually view it in this now. I think it's around the 32,000 poly mark, which obviously is extremely high. But when we're viewing him up close like this, we want that amount of detail because we want to be able to see every little wrinkle in his body. But the further away that we get, the smaller the model gets. So rendering 32,000 polygons for our character at this distance just isn't required. We can't see that amount of detail from this distance. And this is where LOD comes into it. Because what we do, we take this model, we create multiple different versions of it, each with lower poly counts than the last, and then the further our camera is away, we swap that model out for one with a lower poly count. Now, we don't have to actually manually swap that out. Unity's level of detail system does that for us, but we need to create those models. So let's get on with that. So we know, or I know, you're about to know, that Unity's level of detail system can hold up to eight different models. Now, you don't need to use eight. You could use two if you really wanted to. We're going to cap it out at four. So we're going to have our first model, which is the fully detailed 3D model. I'm going to duplicate that model, and I'm just moving him to the side for now. And in Blender, there's a really easy way of doing this. Now, sometimes it isn't perfect. Sometimes you may have to go in and tweak some things. But with this model, it actually works pretty well. And that is the Decimate modifier. So if we, on a duplicated Gladiator, go into our modifier stack, and add the decimate modifier, we can take this down to 0.5. And it doesn't really look that much different, but if we apply that, if we take a look at the wireframe for a fully detailed high-res model, we can see there's a lot of geometry going on here. If we have a look at our second, we see we've halved the amount of geometry. Now, there's still a lot, and he still looks pretty similar to what he did before. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to undo that, and instead of taking it to 0.5, I'm going to take it to 0.2, just so it's a little bit more obvious. And like I say, it holds up to eight different LOD models, so you could do this eight times. And now if we look at this, we see we've got even less geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate the lower resolution one, drag that over to the side, again, add another decimate modifier, and bring that one down by 0.2 again. Now we see we're starting to lose a lot of detail here. If we apply that, we see we have a lot less geometry. And up close, that looks absolutely horrendous. But the further away we get, the more believable that model is. So from this distance, you can't really tell unless you're really looking that this model isn't the same as this model. And just to go completely bonkers, I'm going to do this one more time. Another displacement modifier, and 0.2 again. Right, that is way too far. Maybe not that. Maybe 0.5 on that one. Okay, now that works. Now we have an extremely low res. I may have to censor this, I don't know. Uh, but if we have a look at the UVs, we see that it's pretty much down to PS1 graphics at this point. But again, the further we zoom out, we can't really tell that this model is any different than this model. So now we've got a quick level of detail models completed. 
Now we can actually set it up so Unity will automatically generate this for us when we import the model. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that all these models are back in the same place. So I'm going to select my main model. I'm going to move my cursor to the selected object, and then I'm just going to move all of these over to the cursor. Now we'll see these all snap on top of one another, and it looks like a giant mess. But that's okay. Now, how do we actually do this automatically when we import this Gladiator model into Blender? Well, it's all about the naming conventions. When you bring in a model, Unity will have a look at the model's name and see if it has any level of detail information in there. If it does, it'll automatically set it up based on your model's name. So as we can see here, I've duplicated all these. We have a Gladiator, Gladiator 001, 002, 003. If we were to import that into Unity and drag this in, we'd have all four models in there and it would look exactly like this. We don't want that. What we want to do, we want to rename these layers or these objects to be whatever we want to call it. So this is going to be Gladiator underscore LOD in capitals, and then we start at zero. So our highest resolution image is going to be gladiator underscore LOD zero. And then we're just going to work through and add one to that for each iteration of the model. So the next most detailed is going to be LOD one. Gladiator two is going to change to LOD two. And gladiator three is going to change to LOD three. And that's all you need to do with this. As long as the prefix of the name is the same, so in this case, Gladiator, all of those are identical. And then we have LOD 0 through 3, or again, it goes up to 8, so that could go to LOD 7, including 0. It's all going to work automatically. So now we have that, we can export this and open it up in Blender. So that'll be File, Export as an FBX, and I'm going to export this as Gladiator with LOD and we'll pop back over into Unity. And here's our model. So as we can see, we have one model, which is just called Gladiator with LOD. And inside of that, we have uh, four level of detail models and the meshes. And we can go through these, if we can zoom in on this. Don't know if you can, make it a little bit bigger. We can see that each one of these models is the deteriorating format. Now, all we need to do drag and drop the uh, full parent gladiator with LOD object into a scene. And as if by magic, we can only see the high resolution version. And if we look over into the parent object, the gladiator with LOD, we can see we have this thing called an LOD group. Now what that's done, that's gone through all the child objects. It's disabling all the unwanted level of detail models automatically for us and the further our camera gets away it's going to swap these out so we can see we have this camera right here and what that's going to do that's going to simulate how far away from the object we actually are so the further we get away we're still at LOD 0 as soon as we cross this threshold we change to LOD 1 LOD 2 3 and then when we get so far away, the object gets completely culled and isn't rendered at all. So just to make this look a little bit nicer as well, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put a material on that I've made for this, an actual Unity material, not the one that's come with Blender, so it looks a little bit nicer, not as shiny. It's not that sweaty, I don't care what anyone says. And this even works in scene view. The further we get away, if we just float away, we see that the LOD, when we've selected the object, changes. And over on the right hand side, we can see the camera matches to the actual distance we are away from the model. And so we can actually see what's happening. We can grab in between these different level of details, we can grab the center point and drag this down. So if we were to move all of these up towards the front end, we're going to see this happening close up. We currently have 100% zoom on our object so it's got the complete 32,000 poly model in view we move slightly further back if you watch the uh, the actual scene view here we'll see that it swaps out and because it's so close it's noticeable that it swaps out and then again and then again and then when we get so far away completely calls the object 
So the only thing you really need to do is decide the distances in which you want these models to appear and disappear. That'll change on a game by game basis. But it's been a short video, but I hope it's been useful. I was extremely gobsmacked when I realized that I could do this because there's been so many times that I've wasted countless hours manually creating these LOD groups. It really shows that you should kind of read the documentation once in a while. But yeah, I hope you've learned something, guys. I hope you want to subscribe. I hope you want to see more. If you do, I post every Friday. So I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.